Razia Khan, Regional Head of Research for Africa at Standard Chartered Bank. Ghana has been caught up in the credit crunch as much as other economies in Africa, but Ghana's been a little bit more fortunate. Yes, it is finding the external environment more difficult, it's more difficult to borrow, a lot of foreign investors who had been more active participants in Ghanaian debt and equity markets are no longer that active anymore. But Ghana is fortunate because it's an exporter of gold, it's an exporter of cocoa, and those commodities have largely been resilient to the impact of the credit crisis. So as an importer of oil, where prices have slumped, and an exporter of gold and cocoa, Ghana is not doing that badly. Ghana ran into difficulties last year with its balance of payments crisis and of course not helped by the fact that there were much greater demands on government spending in recent years. The budget deficit does run at something like 15% of GDP and this would be a very serious situation. However, it does need to be recognised that a lot of what contributed to that deficit was typically a one-off. So, for example, the Jubilee celebrations, the impact of the drought in 2007 and Ghana's having to buy more oil, switching away from hydroelectricity generation to thermal generation at a time when oil prices were pressured, and then, of course, the hosting of the Africa Cup of Nations, last year's food price shock, the fuel price shock that effectively saw the reintroduction of fuel subsidies at a certain level of oil prices, and the ongoing sub subsidy of utilities. Now, the government have pledged to do what they can to close the deficit. We believe that technical assistance from the IMF is underway at the moment to look at ways of boosting revenue collection. So certainly we've probably seen the highs of the deficit. The concern for Ghana, of course, is that the domestic debt build-up, the build-up in debt in an attempt to fund the deficit, doesn't get out of hand. At the moment, Ghana does find its financing options constrained. It's financing a very sizable deficit, mainly through short-term borrowing, and that results in higher interest rates and other risks to macroeconomic stability. That is a situation that will need to change for macro stability to be restored. Well, a lot of hopes are currently resting on Ghana's emergence as an oil producer. And to be sure, one of the economy's key vulnerabilities over the, year, if, over the years, if we look back at previous shocks sustained by the Ghanaian economy, almost always tied into oil. For a long time, Ghana did have fuel subsidies in place, and that led to a high energy intensity of the economy relative to its economic size and the structure of the economy. So good news for Ghana, great news in fact, that it stands ready to emerge as an oil producer. But oil alone is not going to be any panacea. It may still be a few years yet before substantial revenue from oil comes to the government of Ghana, to the country. That will take further developments before we're at that stage. Although a lot of hopes are resting on oil as a potential turnaround, we would still say there is an urgency towards restoring macro stability now before the oil starts to flow. That's a question that you would probably have to put to our standard chartered Ghana SME lending team. I can put you in touch with the right people. I do know that on the whole, in the context of Sub-Saharan Africa, Standard Chartered has invested a lot in its SME program. In the past, the emphasis with much of the commercial banking in Africa had really been weighted towards the, the larger corporate space. What we had seen changing during the years of good growth macro stabilization, interest rates coming down, was very much a focus on SME lending and Standard Chartered has started to make important progress in this regard. The key, of course, is going to be the wider macroeconomic backdrop to ensure that that lending takes place on affordable terms. Ghana had come very close to that emerging market status in terms of having been the first African country, the so-called frontier African economies, to launch a euro bond. Unfortunately, what we've seen since then is the impact of the balance of payments crisis with last year's food and fuel price shock, 
the impact of the fiscal crisis alongside the credit crunch, all of those really being negative influences on any economy's ability to move towards emerging market status. So the timetable has been delayed somewhat, but looking to the future with sound growth prospects still, with the prospect of Ghana emerging as an oil producer, the way is still open for Ghana to eventually reach that emerging market status. The potential is still there has a lot going for it. It's been long noted to be a peaceful country in what has at times been a more difficult neighborhood. In the recent past, we had seen Ghana emerging as one of the strongest reformers in the sub-Saharan African space. There is huge potential within much of Africa, but Ghana's a country that stands out because of the strength of its institutions, the peaceful nature of its political transition from one political party to another and then back again. The key, of course, is going to be policy continuity and a longer term, more sustainable framework for growth planning. This is what Ghana has to offer. Investors are increasingly going to be opening up to that fact. We still believe that once conditions turn around, investor interest in Ghana will return. But it is essential that the right steps be put in place in the short term to guarantee that inflation will come down, to guarantee that relative stability to the exchange rate will be restored in order to win back the investor confidence. Ghana is very lucky in that its export sectors tend to provide something of a counter-cyclical boost. Ghana, of course, is a producer of cocoa and what we typically see during downturns is that commodity prices, soft commodity prices, don't tend to be as much affected as, say, mineral prices, hydrocarbons prices. From that perspective, Ghana is fortunate. Mining is also a sector that has done tremendously well in recent years, not only because of the impact of external prices, but also because of the Ghana-specific developments that have taken place. To the extent that a more stable source of energy, electricity can be secured, the projects that had been spoken about actually coming to fruition, that is good news. But perhaps Ghana's untapped potential lies in its propensity to provide services to the rest of the world. It's favorably located in a time zone that is close to Europe. There are strong ties that go back with the US. There's a lot that can be done still to develop services. Ghana's top foreign exchange earner has always been remittances, and that is a key strength of the country. The, the quality, the talent, the, the depth of its diaspora, being able to help develop the country. We see this in the way of remittances, we see this in the way of skills transfer, but probably the most important thing that the Ghanaian diaspora can help to do for the country is to spread the good news. Often there's a lot of negative press given to African countries in the context of a credit crunch, the global economic downturn. The emphasis in the press has really been on political risk everywhere. We tend not to hear the good news stories. We tend not to hear about countries with maturing democracies where there are successes, where there is political stabilization. We tend not to hear either of the economic opportunities of which there are immense opportunities available in Ghana in the near future. Let's not forget the discovery of oil, the production of oil. That is going to be a game-changing event for the Ghanaian economy. There are boundless opportunities, but in a sense, the positive press, the good news, needs to get out there to investors.